Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. I'm coming to you today with an 1853 Enfield rifle musket, maybe the most prolific rifled musket of the U.S. Civil War, used both on the Union and Confederate sides of that conflict. Um, that said, one of the things that comes up when you shoot black powder, and of course musket caps, which at one time were um, highly corrosive, not anymore, but they were at the time, um, is how do you deal with cleaning this? And when you look up on the internet videos about cleaning a rifle musket or cleaning a black powder gun, I find an amazing amount of esoteric instructions about mixing Murphy's oil soap and hydrogen peroxide and rubbing alcohol or other weird concoctions, none of which is wrong by the way, these are ways that will work, and then elaborate 30 minute videos about taking off the barrel bands, deconstructing the entire gun, taking the actual uh, cone off of the gun and pumping water through it with like a hydraulic system by using a ramrod, and all those things will work and will give you a very clean musket. But that said, if you were marching on either the Union or Confederate side of those battles, the reality is there wasn't time to do that, and those kind of resources weren't in the field. So how were those guns cleaned then? And the reality is they were cleaned quite simply. With the Enfield, the actual ramrod actually has a little eyelet cut in it, which is used for cleaning purposes or can be. Today, though, I am going to use a modern cleaning rod just because it's polymerized and won't scratch the muzzle if I were to make a mistake. The ramrod is steel, and yes, you are using the ramrod to ram the projectile home, but there's no reason to use it more for the cleaning process just to exaggerate or accelerate such wear if such a thing could happen. So I'll use a modern ramrod, and I am going to use a modern, well, a more modern, not modern by modern standards, I guess, ballistol as my ending lubricant and preservative. In the Civil War, uh, they would have mostly used some sort of whale oil, probably sperm whale oil, or other fats or things like that. But since we have ballistol nowadays, there's no reason not to use ballistol. But the other thing we do have is some patches here, which would be just pieces of cloth, a rag, and water. That's it. Just water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they would have done it then, what the actual orders of the day were for our moving army. And what we're going to do is first, we're going to peek, take a piece of leather, and I have a piece of leather right here. And we're going to form a seal by putting the leather between the hammer and the cone uh, to make that so that water doesn't leak out. So I'm going to have to do this a little carefully here. So I'm going to drop this carefully on a piece of leather, nice and tight. That means when I fill the bore with water, the water's not going to leak out and down onto the gun. This forms like just a little seal. And yes, I am using a broken K98K sling. Uh, piece of leather there, but it doesn't matter anymore, it's a piece of leather. You can also use an expended musket cap if you happen to have one. So in the field, here's how they would go about this, and then we're going to go through the process on video. They would fill the bowl with water, let it sit, generally about 10 minutes, pour the water out. Fill it again with water, maybe let it sit 5 minutes if you have the time, pour it out. Then fill it again with water, but not all the way, put your thumb over the end and slosh it back and forth, pour it out. At that point, you would then take your ramrod, put a piece of cloth through it, run it down the bore until it came out clean. I'm going to use a modern cleaning rod for that with some modern cleaning patches, but the same exact uh, rules apply. Once it comes out clean, then you put another cloth down it with your lubricant, which would have been sperm oil at the time or some form of grease, and I'm going to use ballistol. Let's go ahead and move the camera angle. I'm going to fill this up with water and let it sit for 10 minutes, and then we're going to go through this process, and you're going to see that when I do that with just plain old water out of a canteen, that all these magical, mystical things and concoctions people make on so many of these videos is not necessary. Okay, so I've got the musket carefully propped here against the table, and I'm going to, of course, you could do this in any other way, whatever you had in the field conditions. I'm going to open my canteen, and I'm going to simply pour water down the barrel until it's full. Oop, a little over the side. I'm going to plug my canteen back up, leave that here on the table, and this is going to sit here for 10 minutes. So let's come back in a few. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and pick this up, and I'm going to turn the camera down to the ground. I'm going to show you the disgusting stuff that's going to come out of this rifled musket bore, and then we're going to fill it up again with water. Oh, at the end there, it got pretty dark. Let's bring it back to the table. All right, we've done our 10 minutes, so we're going to do it again for five minutes. Okay, 
and now we wait again. All right, here we are. So we're gonna dump out the rest of this water. Which is honestly looking pretty clear at this point. We're gonna go ahead and do the slosh method I mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna fill it up part of the way and then we're gonna slosh it around. Let's spill our water. Put the thumb over the top and then we just And hear the water sloshing in there. And then, out it goes. So now at this point, I'm gonna put it on the table and we're gonna go ahead and run our first patch down there. And we're gonna see what we get. Okay, so this is after 15 minutes of nothing more than soaking and some shaking. And let's put our first patch down there, just dry. Let's see what we get. gray, but not black. We're just gonna keep doing this. Like I said, I, I can actually flip the patch around now too. This is actually going pretty quick. I could use the ramrod. I just don't want to. Historically, they would have with an infield. Now at this point, I'm gonna add some more water. I'm gonna use a wet patch. I'm gonna mix some ballastol in it just because that's not an unusual thing to do. So a little ballastol, more water. That emulsifies, which will happen with other oils too, to some degree. You can see it kind of gets sort of like a soapy kind of consistency. And we'll run it down the bore. that. Almost done. This is just straight ballastol, not mixed with water at this point. And this is what they would have done back then with like sperm oil. Sperm whale oil, excuse me. One super wet, and then one dry. So there's a couple things we also need to worry about. The ramrod itself, so let's go ahead and take that out. And as you can see, that's grody as well, and it's in the white, which means we have to be particularly worried about this. So this is what the rag comes in for. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray some ballastol on the rag. A little bit of water on my rag. We're just gonna wipe this down. Here's a fingernail for some of the really uh, tough spots right there. Just wipe this down all the way. And I'm gonna give it a little extra ballastol because that's a protectorant. And then we'll put that back in the gun. We got a couple other spots that we need to consider as well. So I'm gonna turn this around. You see here, I got that little piece of leather. I'm gonna take that off. And there's a lot of black powder fouling around here, and that's not good either because, well, that's where there's a bunch of blow-by, right? And other things from the percussion cap. So once again, same story. Water and ballastol. Practically wipes right off. I don't know if you can see that, but it literally is just wiping right off.
the hammer around the cone. Now I'm going to use a patch just to get a little closer to the actual cone itself. That's frankly all I'm going to worry about on that. Then we're going to go to the muzzle end, clean that off. And then we're just going to spray the whole darn thing. I'm going to rag, just down the gun. And frankly, for field cleaning, a civil wear on musket, that's really about it. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this little more technical side of things and care maintenance of guns of this era. And I'm not saying you don't need or should never do those esoteric things that you see on some of those other videos. At some point or another, you should use a cone wrench and take off the cone and clean the firing channel out, clean that out better, and maybe be a little more inclusive in terms of actually taking off the lock and all of that. But the reality is that was not something the soldier was expected to do. In fact, they were instructed not to do those things. What we just did is what the average soldier in the field, whether Union or Confederate, was instructed to do for the care and maintenance of their musket, their rifled musket, whether it was an 1861 Springfield or an 1853 Enfield, it didn't matter. This is what the average soldier was allowed to do and was instructed to do and required to do for the care and maintenance of their rifled musket. Taking parts off of the gun, removing the lock, removing the, the, the cone or the nipple as we like to say nowadays, were things that were absolutely verboten and were supposed to be done by the armorer or the quartermaster and anything other than that was not allowed. So. What's interesting about that is that's, that makes sense, right? <clears throat> because the average soldier didn't have time nor necessarily even the mechanical capabilities, depending on the individual, to do all of those things. And these rifles were required to be used in a time of war, maybe at a moment's notice. So anything other than a very simple cleaning like we just did right now with simple materials like water and one protectorant and maybe some pieces of cloth, maybe even using just the ramrod that's included with the actual rifle musket was all you needed to do field maintenance of your rifle musket during the war. So guys, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Everything you saw here today was purchased via Patreon dollars, whether it was the ballast doll or this rifled musket itself, of which there's going to be more of on the channel. We're going to be talking about a lot of Civil War topics um, on in range this year. Um, and it's Patreon supporters that made that possible because this channel is not sponsored by anyone. We have no advertising money. I have proactively demonetized InRange. The only money that supports this channel are viewers like you. Pretty much the PBS model. You get to decide if InRange continues to exist or not. If you can't, we do understand. Just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. We're all over the place, not just YouTube. And you can find them all at InRange.tv. Thank you for watching.